Hello and welcome back to another Inside EVs video. Welcome here to beautiful Estes Park, Colorado. And in this video, I'm going to explain why you should charge your EV at night on a road trip and not in the morning such as I have. So join me for a mistake I've made and hopefully you can learn from this. I also purposely made the mistake so I could make this video. Let's get into it. This is my personal car. It's a Tesla Model 3 Performance. It's just about to hit 100,000 miles. And this is one of the many EVs I've owned over the years. I'm no stranger to these cars. I've road tripped them around the world, uh, not in one continuous trip, but in many continents. So I've had a lot of experience charging on road trips is what I'm trying to say. And well, when it's cold out overnight, and your car sits there when the battery gets cold, it means you won't get as fast charging as you would when the battery's warm after a day full of driving. So what we're gonna do is just do a little, not very scientific experiment. We're gonna go down to the Tesla supercharger, just down that way here in Estes Park. Absolutely gorgeous up here. There was an elk right out front all morning. It was absolutely wonderful. And, um, Actually, the neighbor even fed him some pumpkins and pet him. I was like, I didn't know you could do that with an elk, but apparently so. So what we're going to do is it got down to about 19 degrees Fahrenheit last night. Not extremely cold. This is not an extreme test, but we're going to talk about cold weather supercharging as we're getting into the cold weather months and just general DC fast charging for most of the cars. So let's hop inside the Model 3. Let's take a look to see what our state of charge is, what the car thinks, everything's going on for battery pack wise. Yeah, so we're at 26% state of charge. See that little blue snowflake right there? Well, that means if I click the battery display, it shows that this bit of the battery pack is unavailable for use. Now there's two reasons as to why there's less capacity when it's cold. One, cold weather means there's less available total capacity out of the battery pack. So at normal, you know, 75 degree day, this wouldn't be there, that blue line. But also, this is also factoring in some of the energy that it's gonna need to warm up the battery pack on the way to the supercharger. Now, if we go here and I click the little supercharger thing, you can see there's seven spots available at the supercharger. What I wanna do is actually not navigate there because what that would do is it will precondition the car to warm up on the way to the supercharger. And I kinda of wanna give us a worst case scenario. So what I'm gonna do is drop the pin right where it is. And then we're gonna kind of drive over there and uh, yeah, about an eight minute drive and see what we get for DC fast charging speeds without the car trying to warm up. Cause I kind of want to show how bad it is if you leave the car out overnight with low state of charge. You join me now here at the Stanley Hotel. Interestingly, where they shot The Shining, that horror film right there. Uh, and there's a supercharger here. So uh, it was only about two miles away. We're down to 24% state of charge. I tried to keep the battery as cold as possible, you know, using neutral and friction brakes rather than regen to slow down. Because here's what I'm trying to simulate and to show to you guys. I hear countlessly, and over my years of EV road tripping, I've always heard, hey, I woke up in the morning at my hotel. I went to plug in my car, and then it said I was going to take two hours, three hours, four hours to charge. In reality, they actually warm up over a pretty short period of time and then will increase speed as it, in, as it warms up. But that's what I wanted to show you was if you're coming here to the Stanley, for example, it's going to get cold at night up here in the Rocky Mountains and many regions of the northern parts of the US and Europe. Uh, it's best to actually bite the bullet, stay up another 30 minutes at night, charge your car up at the DC fast charger, then go to sleep and then in the morning, use that initial first drive with the next charging station, preconditioning your car. So let's see what kind of speeds we get. I'm pretty interested uh, to see. I know Tesla has improved the cold weather charging ability of Model 3 over time. And this one's on the newest software update that even gives you some supercharger tips. So let's plug in. We still have the blue snowflake and see what we get. What we're plugging into here is a 150 kilowatt version two supercharger. And we are at the state of charge where this car can accept 150 kilowatts on a warm battery pack. A warm battery pack can accept more power because the resistance is lower in the pack. And also lithium is happier to accept energy at lower states of charge. So let's see what we get here. Starting to charge 24%. We got the blue bit here on the battery pack. They're doing some construction off in the distance. My guess is not much. Let's see, ramping up here. Wow, doing better than I expected. So about 45 kilowatts. 
50 kilowatts roughly. It should be doing about 150, but it's settling off here at 50. Now, two things are going to happen when we're DC charging this car. The act of charging itself is going to warm up the battery pack. So just keeping it plugged in is going to help. But also it's going to be running the battery heaters with the motors to get everything up to temperature. So this is the quickest way to warm up your car other than just flooring it and then full regen and flooring it and yo-yoing the car, as some would say. Uh, if if I was coming over here to the charger and I was in this situation in the morning, that's actually what I would have done. I would have navigated to the supercharger here like this. I would have, it would have preconditioned for fast charging. Won't do it because we're here, obviously. And then, of course, I would have, uh, you know, used a lot of acceleration and as much regen as the car would give me considering it's cold. So 52 kilowatts when it should be doing 150 kilowatts. It's not even that cold outside. 51 degrees. It was about 44 when we left. So I hope that just shows you guys, you know, in the cold weather, it's best to just bite the bullet charge up your car at night after a long drive when everything's nice and toasty because the battery packs in these cars are huge there's so much thermal mass they take a long time to warm up on the way to a charging station another alternative let me share with you some other best practices for cold weather charging just down that away wow just check out that view in the distance rocky mountain national park absolutely beautiful another alternative to dc fast charging on road trips is actually to find hotels with level two chargers this is what i usually recommend uh typically tesla chargers for example have the tesla plug end on it but you can see that just normal tesla plug and so these are actually the j1772 units uh they've been installed for a couple years here now uh, and then Tesla recently started selling these units and then they went off sale. Not sure why, maybe they just had some inventory to clean up, but it doesn't actually look like these are even on. Not sure what's going on there. Anyway, my other recommendation is to, rather than finding hotels with Tesla superchargers, find level two charging stations. I always use PlugShare or Chargeway, two great apps to find uh, charging station locations. Um, and what you can do here for these stations and say, hey, you know, your car wants to leave at, you know, 10 a.m. or 9 a.m., whatever you're planning to leave, what you can do is plug in, have your car preconditioned, charge up, and be completed just at 9 a.m. so that the act of charging and warming up, preconditioning your car can all be done from grid power so you'll have a more efficient drive and everything will be nice and toasty for your trip. So just again, a quick video on some cold weather charging tips. I always set my cars to start charging charging at three or four o'clock in the morning in the winter time something like this so by the time I get to them in the morning they are warm and good to go and now you can see here I'm back up at the car and ooh, it's dropped down to 40 kilowatts yikes if this isn't proof that you should stay up late charge at night on your road trips I don't know what is this should be doing 150 kilowatts right now well, there you have it, guys. That's pretty much proof of the matter. We're still sitting at 42 kilowatts. It's going to take forever to charge up here. Um, you know, at the end of the day, this, this applies to pretty much any electric car with lithium batteries. They just hate to charge when cold. It takes a long time to warm them up. So a couple tips for you for fastest DC charging since I'll know they'll come. Usually try to plug in under... 15% state of charge somewhere around there to get the big peak speeds if you're looking for that and then of course make sure your car is warm precondition your battery a lot of cars now uh tycon tesla lucid etc when you put in a dc fast charger that is you know of pretty high power the cars will automatically say whoa i need to warm up to 30 degrees celsius whatever their target is uh to have lower resistance in the battery pack to have the highest charging rate so that's very important um also, you know, on a road trip, this could be like the most annoying thing ever. So bite the bullet, charge up at night before a, a hotel, and then go again in the morning. I've had to do it many times where I'm sitting there at like two in the morning. I'm like, oh, this is just brutal. Look, at the end of the day, electric cars aren't perfect. We're still early days. The technology's new. And one of those things that we're going to have to live with going into winter time is making sure, uh, you know, to control your battery's temperature when you're looking for fast charging. So if you don't have home charging and you have to rely on DC fast charging? Well, this is a problem in colder environments because this is the type of situations that many run into. So again, I love electric cars, been driving them for 10 years. Are they perfect? No. Are there some ways around their idiosyncrasies? Yes. Just drive the piss out of it. Try and warm it up as fast as possible on the way to a fast charge in the morning. 
Otherwise, I would just find hotels with level two charging for your road trips along the highway. There's plenty of them. Plug, share, charge way, both great resources to find chargers. Thanks so much for watching another Inside EVs video. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.